I've got confidence. I've got confidence. Hallelujah. God is going to see us through. God is going to see me through. And no matter what the case may be, he will fix it for me. I just want you to sit this morning. Hallelujah. I just want to say thanks to the musician who have helped us so far to tap into the presence of God and Nicole and the worshipers. Put your hands together. We thank God for them because they are anointed to do such. Amen. And I want to be so grateful and thankful to God Almighty that we are here and we are still in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Because many thought that they were going to be around at this time. And they were not so fortunate. And you know what it tells me? That God has left us alive to, to be in the fight. That's why we're here. So you don't throw in the towel. No matter what the case may be. God is going to see us through. Hallelujah. God is going to fix it for me. He's going to fix it for you. He's going to fix it for... Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And so let me take the time off to just welcome everybody. And in particular, those of you that are visiting with us. Are there any visitors in the house this morning? I mean, you're our guest. You're here. You're worshiping with us today. Probably not a member of this church, but you're just taking the opportunity to, to worship along with us. However, doesn't seem to be, have anybody this morning. But we're thankful to God anyhow. Amen. I want to give God thanks also for his faithfulness. That Sammy is alive. Is Sammy well? Oh my God. It is well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. God is a faithful God. He's a prayer answering God. He's a way maker. Oh yeah. Light in the darkness. My God. God is a good God. Hallelujah. And I wish God just give me the grace so that I could, you know, con continue to, to big him up. Because a lot of people doesn't have the, the, the perspective of God. They do not understand who God is and, and so much things that we don't understand about God. But one thing I want you to understand about God is that God is a God of love. And we may see a lot of things in the Bible and hear people say a lot of things and we, we don't understand that every act, every single act that God performs have a love story behind it. Everyone. And it amazes me that whatever God does, he does it or he did it because of his love. And I just wish God could help me to expand on that in the days ahead. However, this is not what I want to talk about this morning. I just want to, I just want to thank God this morning. I want to show you that God and his team will always win. Anybody could doubt that? Listen, if you're on, on God's side, you are on the winning side. And there's no doubt about it. This is what I want to talk to you about this morning. I want to emphasize that God and his team will always win. 
Say about the ungodly are not so. But they shall be like the chaff. That the wind drive it away. Woo! Glory to God. The ungodly. He says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Not seated in the seat of the scornful. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in it do it, he meditate day and night. Hallelujah. But the ungodly are not so. Just not like that. Hallelujah. And so this morning, if you have your, or you wear as you should, have your Bible. I would like for you to turn with me, please, to the book of Genesis. It's supposed to be the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 50. As soon as you find it, say amen. Let us pray. Sora manana 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 Asantes na vida manana masantes na vai Oh God Father we thank you this morning for your love for your goodness your mercy Lord God for providing protecting preserving Lord we thank you for your presence we thank you for your peace we thank you Lord God for the purpose in our lives Lord, we thank you that we are not here by guess or by chance. But God, we are predestined. Shakura Basantis. And so, Lord, this morning, I pray, God, in short, that when we shall have left this place, that we're going to be so filled, dear Father God, that we're going to have enough, not just for today, but God, for a long time, God, that we're going to bask in your presence and and Lord God, that we're going to chew on your word. And God, that we are going to be preserved in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I commit your people into your hands and I pray for your blessings upon them. Total fulfillment, dear Father. And confidence, dear Master. Lord, all this I ask in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. From verse 15 to 22 of Genesis chapter 50, it says, And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph, will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, or Joseph saying, thy father did command before he died, saying, so shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin. For they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servant of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servant. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am in, uh, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, 
Ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when this mighty patriarch was dying, recall the story of Joseph's role of his presence in Egypt. Humanly probably thought that Joseph was going to recompense evil for what his brethren had done unto him. And he left a warning. He left a request. He said, forgive them. Forgive them. Hallelujah. But Joseph was ahead of time and he was ahead of love and ahead of mercy. When he heard the request of his father, he was crushed in tears. But he reminded his brethren, he said, you might have meant it for evil, but God meant it for good and to save the lives of many people. And I am here to tell you, it doesn't matter what happens to you in this life? God is going to use it for his glory. It doesn't matter. I was telling the church not so long ago and I was telling and speaking so loudly all over the place. I said, devil, I will never be one day unhappy in my life again. Never. Do you know why? Because I know that I was called of God. And the Bible says, now we know that all things, all things, work together for good to them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to his purpose. Ain't that something for you to just run all over the place? To just fly, to just dance, to just, woo! Now we know that all things, not some things, Good things, bad things, things that are not favorable, unfavorable. Mischief, lies. Whatever it is. Accident. Mishap, whatever you want to call it. Now we know that all things work together for good. To them that love the Lord. They might think they're hurting you. They might want to hurt you. They might plan to hurt you. They might feel that they're hurting you. They might feel that they're destroying you. They might feel that they're putting you down. So much emotions might be going... But all they are doing, they just might be saving lives. Because God is using it. God is going to take your experiences. God is going to take every single thing that happened to you and compile it for his purpose. And for his glory. 
Everything. So listen, listen, just look back over your life. Because you're called of God. Amen. You're called of God. Burn well, you're called of God. We don't understand. We are called of God. We are predestined. Don't you know, people think, it, and this is why sometimes we get kind of a little tired. A lot of people thinking that what's going on in the world today is something that has taken God by nothing than taking God by chance. God fixed for that long time. Jesus was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Long before God thought of making the world. He had a plan for you and me. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. And so somebody going to tell me. And this is why sometimes we have so much uh, 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 debate as to what's going on and what's happening and all of that. Man, you think God, you think... You think my God is going to leave everything to some devil to destroy his world and his church and his people and you that are called of God? Woo well, what kind of God is that? They have all kind of... I don't want to go there this morning because I never intended to... To go there. They have all kind of ideas and theories and all kind of thing what's going on. And they don't know nothing. They don't even know what's going on. But my bottom statement is this. You think God's going to leave it to the mercy of some devil? So God is totally out of control. So he said, devil, just take the world, do whatever you want. Kill me, people. Kill the church. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Oh God, I can see that. Yeah. They have all kind of reason for vaccine and no vaccine and all of that kind of stuff. That is all your problem. That's their problem. And I'm not telling you to take or not to take. All I'm telling you is that you have a right to what goes into your body. And so we're just fixing up that the church is going to stay alive and well and we're going to unite and love one another. That's what we have to do because that devil is going to use this thing and he's using it. So don't do, don't, don't, according to the prime minister, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't let that devil use you. Because God is in absolute control. You see, he's going to use it to change us genetically. Because they do it in agriculture and they do it in so many areas. You know, and so, oh my God, we're so scared that something wrong is going to happen. Well, I don't know. I, I don't see God 